Hey everyone, this is your friendly neighborhood Deadpool here. I'm here to talk about my very own movie starring God's Perfect Idiot, a hot chick, a British villain, the comic relief, a moody teen, a CGI character, and a grittiest cameo, and directed by an overpaid tool. Just kidding, guys. I wish I could do that better than Ryan Reynolds, but it's not true. It, I am discussing Deadpool, though, on my shirt, see? Starring Ryan Reynolds, Marina Baccarin, Ed Skrine, T.J. Miller, Brianna Hildebrand, and Gina Carano, and directed by Tim Miller. And I remember seeing this in theaters and thinking, this is a great, funny movie for the Deadpool fans. So, and I hope it's better than Wolverine Origins, or should I say that? Eh, let's get into it. I found the fake opening credits rather too damn humorous at a point I was cracking up pretty damn much. And Angel of the Morning was a perfect song to open up that hilarious moment. At first we follow Wade Wilson, a.k.a. Deadpool, played by Ryan Reynolds, tracking to attack Ajax, a.k.a. Francis, played by Ed Skrine from this movie. To fix what happened to his face, which... We'll see later in the movie, but he meets the Dopender, a taxi cab driver, and Wade tells him a speech about love, which was really funny. I also like the fact that this is a different Deadpool compared to that god-awful Wolverine Origins, and he barely make brings up he barely brings it up as Wolverine, which was which what a great way to apologize about how badly treated he was in that movie. Deadpool jumps along way down to beat up men who work for Francis, and the violence here is very cartoony funny, but hey, it's a comic book. It's good of Deadpool to keep count of how many bullets he has left. We move on to a flashback two years ago. Wade is a bad guy who gets paid to fuck up worse guys, and his best friend Weasel, played by T.J. Miller, owns a bar and makes a bar... makes a... A drink called a blowjob, and Bat and Buck beats, who's uh, one of the attendees at the bar, beats up a man who was led to believe he gave him the drink. Vanessa, played by Marina Baccarin from this TV show, and I really like her in this movie. And Ryan Reynolds has charisma as this character. And these two characters have such good chemistry together. I love them. The mess. I love them them as a couple until we gets cancer, and I felt that is kind of that it kind of slows down the movie just a little bit, in my opinion. We go back to Deadpool beating up Francis until Colossus interrupts the fight and throws him. While we should have gotten that a little later on. And we move back to a toy of Deadpool from Wolverine Origins. And Wade and Vanessa talk about how they need to fight the cancer. And again, it kind of slows down the movie a bit. Wade gets introduced to Agent Smith, and I, which I swear to God, it looks like a young Kevin Pollock. And I like how his face looks like him. He tells Wade about a way to cure cancer at the same time as becoming a superhero. And I like the character. I love Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead, played by Brianna Handlebrand, and Colossus is a different actor compared to the X-Men movies, and, oh, I should bring this up now, Bef the only reason I put this in the X-Men universe is because they bring it up quite a few times, and he is part of that universe, I will admit. I think they're in, back to the show, I think they're incredibly great and awesome, and I love the way Deadpool tries to beat up Colossus and breaks his bones, and after Deadpool is in his handcuffs, he flips off Colossus, was hysterical. Wade hits the fuck it button, and meets Francis in Angel Dust, played by Gina Carano from Haywire, and I'll someday talk about her again in this movie. I'm waiting for either part 9 or 10 of that series who will torture Wade while the song from the original Halloween 2 is playing in the background, and Wade finds out Francis is his legal name and got Ajax from the soap, 
And Wade's face turns into Freddy Krueger's face thanks to a machine that'll suffocate him to death, which did feel as scary as hell. I did find it funny when Wade gets Angel Dust's match and burns the machine and explodes, but I found a pretty damn good move. I found a pretty damn good movie, Wade versus Francis, was kind of a brutal, but I like the original. And I like the origin of how he becomes De Deadpool. Wade is afraid to show Vanessa's his burned face and goes to Weasel and talks about his face quite a bit. Which, the comments are really hilarious. And I like how he how he kills every man to find Francis and he kills one of the Z Zumbo one with the Zamboni, which is something from a hockey games, and hits a girl... And, oh my god, I love the way how he says, is it sexist not to hit you or to hit you or something like that? And that's how we get back to the rest of the story. Wade lives with an old blind lady named Al, and Al is really hilarious, particularly since she acts like a hard ass to Wade. And Francis and Angel Dust try to find Wade and go to Weasel's bar, and Weasel and Wade go to Vanessa's work, and we get a Stan Lee cameo, which was great. And Francis takes Vanessa, and Wade is pissed. And it's an awesome way to get to the climax, in my opinion. Francis makes Wade find him in the scrapyard, and brings Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead to be in the fight. And it starts off with Colossus versus Angel Dust versus... And Negasonic Teenage Warhead pushes large heavy weight, Scrap, and Deadpool killing every single person in the battleground, except for a friend that he met at a TGI Fridays. Which I found hysterical, and the fight was is very gripping until Negasonic Teenage Warhead puts Deadpool on the top of the roof, and the Deadpool vs. Francis fight was a very good fight, and they get back to the ground. And before Deadpool kills Francis, Colossus goes on with a speech called Being a Hero. And while he's halfway there, he shoots Francis and tells Vanessa how sorry he is. And she wants to see his face. And we get a brief cameo of Hugh, by Hugh Jackman on a magazine. And she finally sees his face and accepts him, which was a very sweet way to end this movie. And credits roll to an after credit scene, which... With the Ferris Bueller's Day Off reference and says to not leave your garbage lying around that it's a total dick move, which was an awesome after credits scene, especially with this. Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 8.3 out of 10. This movie is incredibly funny with a good heart. Ryan Reynolds' charisma is what makes this movie. And I love the characters, and they have good comedic timing. And this plot is dense, sure, but this is a good time at the movies, in my opinion. So I would like to thank you guys for joining me, and next week I will be back with X-Men Apocalypse. The one that we've all been waiting for, I guess, since Days of Future Past, until we see it. I'll talk about it. And until next time, chicka chicka.